Greetings YouTube, Sega Zombie here and welcome back guys to another video. And as it says in the title, this is a pickups video, but this is all about movies, films, and since um, the VHS bootleggers started their channel and I've appeared on a few of their live streams, it's really sparked, reignited my passion for films. And the YouTube name Sega Zombie came from them two passions. Sega, obviously gaming, retro gaming, and predominantly Sega. And the zombie part was to do with horror films and zombie movies, because at the top of the chain is zombie films for me. When it comes to the horror genre, absolutely love everything about zombies. I'm covered in tattoos. You know, I've always, ever since I was a young lad, been obsessed with the zombie monster you know it's a great great concept and there's been some fantastic films and this is a first really I dabbled in it in the lockdown videos and I showed some of my blu-rays off um, and I've been toying with the idea do I start introducing some films into the channel and I'm not saying there's going to be loads of videos we'll see how this one goes you know but I'm really buzzing to show you what I've got it's a pickups video here in the UK last week and um, the lockdown starting to ease and starting to lift here and non-essential shops have reopened. And that has been great because it's been absolutely months and months since we've been able to go to charity shops, to CEX, to, the, to your local town's high street, you know. And that has sparked me on because as soon as I could get out, I have. I've been into the town. I've been to CEX. I've done loads of charity shops with Jade. And... In these parts, you don't get many games in charity shops. Um, you get the, the usual fodder. FIFA, sports titles, dance games, you know, stuff that no one really wants. And occasionally you do get that retro bargain or gaming bargain, but it's few and far between these days. And boy, have I noticed something since, since the lockdown is prices have gone up. Me and Jade went to our local market town. It's just a small town, um, close to the village where I live. And um, they've got about half a dozen charity shops. And the one thing we noticed was the prices have real taken a hike. So I don't know if that's the charity's trying to claw back some of the money they've lost. But for me, if I'm picking up a DVD, it's got to be under a pound. And some of these um, charity shops are charging three pound a DVD, which... In monetary terms, isn't a lot, but it is when I've got hundreds and hundreds of DVDs. Really, my collection over the last few years has been sort of evolving into Blu-ray. I know you've got 4K now. I do have a 4K player, but I'm a bit slow to move, you know. I was the same with VHS, the same with DVD. You know, I'm only now seriously looking at Blu-rays, and they've been around for donkey's years. <laughs> so... Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of looking for Blu-rays. So if I see Blu-rays, that's great. DVDs, I'm a lot more fussy. It has to be a bargain or a really obscure title. So that's where we're going to start this video, guys. We're going to start with the charity shop finds. These ones are what I got while out and about with Jade. And it wasn't until the very last charity shop that I bought anything. Because like I said... They were asking silly money for DVDs. And you guys that go to charity shops will notice it's usually the same old AAA films that you see. And I've always had a running joke, and it's the same with the booters. There's always one film that you see over and over again. And this charity shop hunt, this time out, it was Dirty Dancing. I think I saw Dirty Dancing in every single charity shop we went in, which was really funny. <clears throat> Yeah, so it was all about Dirty Dance. We laughed. We picked it up in every shop. But the last charity shop, which was Cancer Research UK, we um, they had a deal on. Now, all their DVDs are usually a pound each, but they were doing five for a pound. Mix and match as well. So you could mix them with DVDs, CDs. Was it books as well? They had like a media section and they had it all kitted out. And... Um, I struggled to find five, but I found five here. First up, we've got Urban Legend. Now, when was this? This has got to be a mid-90s film, isn't it? 
Let's have a little look here. 1998, so a little bit later. It's a late 90s film. A horror that I actually enjoyed back in the 90s, but I've not seen it since. Um, me and Jade looking forward to giving that one a watch. So Urban Legend is the first one. And for 25p, it's worth it. And next up, we've got a remake. And again, weren't they popular in the 2000s? And that is the remake of The Hills Have Eyes. The extended cut. Now, I might already have this one. Um, but I thought for 25p, I will take the gamble. Now, this is done by Alexandra AJA. Um, he done some fantastic films in the, in the early of his career. And then he moved on to Hollywood. And this was his first break into Hollywood. And I, I adore the original Wes Craven, The Hills Have Eyes. And this didn't disappoint me. Um, I'm trying to think what films it was that Alexandra done. It might have been... Was it High Tension? He might have done High Tension. Um, and The Division, was it, maybe? He'd done some really striking, gory, suspenseful films. Violent as well. And I thought he was a perfect fit for the remake of this. And so it panned out. This is a fantastic film, if you've not seen it. And, yeah, it's a good modern take on a great Wes Craven film. So, yeah, The Hills Have Eyes for 25p, guys. And then we're going back, complete nostalgia with the next one. And that is Convoy. Wow, Chris Christopherson. And, um, yeah, the rubber duck. Rubber duck, break a one nine, break a one nine. This is the rubber duck. It brings back so many memories. I must have been around Eden's age, around about eight when I see this film. And my best friend at the time from school, Gary, his dad was a truck driver. And back then, our main ambition <laughs> when we grew up is we wanted to be truck drivers and drive the trucks that they do in here, the big, huge juggernauts and that. Fantastic film. I haven't seen it in donkey's years, so looking forward to giving that a watch. That's a pure nostalgic one, that one. So, Convoy. And then, was this Steven Seagal's biggest film, sort of budget-wise? And that is Under Siege. I'm pretty certain I don't have this one on DVD. But yeah, again, I had to pick it up for 25 pence. A great movie. I'm looking forward to giving that one a watch. Me and Jade have been getting into loads of action films. Slowly educating her boys. She's catching up. <laughs> and then finally, we do have one game, um, which I'll show you because it come in the bundle. Because I really struggled to find five films. And I mixed this cheek and put this one in the bundle. And that is Transformers the game for the Wii. Let me know in comments, guys. Is this any good? I suppose it's movie related. It's probably based on the film, but looking at the the cover there. But yeah, is it any good? I don't even know. It's an Activision game, but it's all complete. It's all in there. 25p. Had to be done. So that was the charity shops in that local town. And then um, I dropped Jade home back in her town and we thought... It's still early. Let's hit a few charity shops there. And wow, I'm glad we did because we got some great films from there. And we'll mix it up a bit. <clears throat> and we got some Blu-rays. And you do see Blu-rays in charity shops, but they're over extortionately priced. And I mean sort of five, six quid. Sort of more CEX money. Or they're just documentaries that you've got no interest in. But I was really surprised they had a nice section in this charity shop. And I picked most of them up because I thought, wow, they're all really good films. First up, we've got Shane Meadows's This Is England and What A Film. Really, really enjoyed this movie back in the day. When was this one? This one's got to be mid-2000s, isn't it? Let's have a look. Yep, 2007. A great film. I've not, I love every, everything that's set in the 80s like that. And I'm really looking forward to watching it again because it's been long enough that I've kind of a bit hazy. I remember certain bits, but it'll be good to sort of like get back into the story of that. And I'm really looking forward to seeing This Is England. And that was a pound, guys. And then next up, we've got a Luke Besson film and from the producers of Transporter, which was a film I really enjoyed 
with um, Jason Statham back in the 90s. And that is District 13. Really cool film. Loads of brilliant set pieces and choreography. Loads of awesome fighting. Brilliant film. No wires, no special effects, no limits. Just an explosive mix of jaw-dropping, free-running and spectacular action. That sums up pretty well, guys, if you've not seen it. But yeah, welcome to the district. Welcome to hell. A pound. Then we move on to a more modern film. Um, I think this one's only a couple of years old. And I've never seen it before. And as you can see, we're getting a mixture of genres here. And that is Rush. And I thought, for a pound, when was this released? Uh, 2014. So, yeah, it's a few years old now, but it's a lot more newer than these other ones. And I've never seen it. Um, I know nothing about it, but I thought, you know what? It's sort of more of a drama, sort of like a biography, as you will, on um, two rival drivers from the 70s, I believe. Let's have a little look. Academy Award winner Ron Howard, A Beautiful Mind, once again teams up with Academy Award-nominated writer Peter Morgan, Frost and Nixon on Rush, a fast-paced and spectacular recreation of the merciless and legendary 1970s Formula One rivalry between English playboy James Hunt, played by Chris Hemsworth, and his Australian opponent, Nicky Lauder, Daniel Brühl, from Inglorious Bastards. So, mm, could be good. Let me know in comments, guys. Uh, is it worth my time putting a, a couple of hours in that, or am I going to lose them forever? <laughs> so, yeah, Rush. And then a film I haven't seen since the cinema. I see it at the cinema. I can remember... Thinking it was a bit of a meh film. You know, it's, films are always a lot more enjoyable in the cinema, aren't they? Um, and I kind of thought, mm, is that one I want our own? So I never bothered getting it. And that is 30 Days of Night. Now, I actually sat and watched this one the other night. And I enjoyed it. It's a good film. It's definitely above an average film. Gory. Very gory. Lots of blood, which is what we like. And... Melissa George, she's an underrated actress. She's appeared in quite a lot of B-movies. This is a Ghost House production. Um, when was this one released? This was, it's got to be mid-2000s as well. Yep, 2007 as well. So, um, yeah, a magnificently scary, the vampire film finally draws blood again. Terrifying. A thrilling, tense, white-knuckle horror trip. It is a good film. I like the setting. I like how it's set in Alaska. And obviously the take on 30 days of night. So they've got to survive 30 days of darkness. And yeah, it's a good film. I did enjoy it. I think I, I liked it more than I did back then. So yeah, Josh Hartnett as well. A good film. And then they had the sequel there, which I didn't even know there was one. And that's 30 days of night, dark days. I know absolutely nothing on this one, guys. So let me know, is this one worth a watch or not? And then finally to a director that in the 90s was a massive English director, really. And that's Danny Boyle. He'd done Train Spotting and the brilliant 28 Days Later. I absolutely adore that movie. And then after that, the success of that, he'd done Sunshine. Now, I can remember rushing out to the cinema and going and seeing this. I don't know if it was because at the time I was kind of fed up with sci-fi. I kind of left sci-fi behind back then. It's a sort of like genre that I go in and out of. Um, I've got to be in the right kind of frame and mood for science fiction. And I think at the time I was a little bit meh. I was expecting more. Um, but I watched this. I watched this last night actually. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's actually a really good film. Yeah, it's suspenseful. Um, it kind of has a similar feel, I suppose, to Alien. Um, but does enough happen? Hmm. I think there could have been more with this film. But it's a good film. It's a good film. I know it's highly rated um, critically as well as um, viewers. You know, us, the public, we enjoyed it back then. But I remember being slightly disappointed. But I liked watching it the second time through. All these years later, enjoyed it. So they're the Blu-rays I picked up, guys. 
Let me know in comments what you think of any of these films. Um, did you used to wish you was a truck driver? Did you wish you was the rubber duck? <laughs> <clears throat> and then we move on to another charity shop. And this one was very peculiar. Most charity shops will have their DVDs, CDs. They're all usually set one price unless they're box sets and things like that. But these, this charity shop had everything individually priced. And they're really random prices. You'll see what I mean, guys. First up, we've got this one. And that is Azumi, the double bill. And this one captured me straight away. Because I thought, oh, that's interesting. 50 pence. And um, I looked at the back and I see that I recognise the director. Now, um, forgive me now, guys, because I'll butcher it. But Rihu Kitamurua? Kitamurua? I can't say it. You know I butcher these names. We'll just say Rihu. Um, based on the comic by Yu Kuyuma. It looks really interesting. A roller coaster of excitement. You need to check it out. Quality fight scenes, top flight entertainment. It's the two films. I don't know if there was any more. Let me know in comments, guys, what are these like? Because, like I said, I've never seen them. There's the original one, Azumi. And then it's sequel. 50 pence. I'm going to get it. I really enjoyed Versus. The, the director done Versus, and that was a great sort of zombie samurai sort of film. Really cool. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to give this a try. And now we're going back, guys, to a really old classic. And this movie, I can remember watching it with my mum and her friend. And I felt kind of uncomfortable because I think I was too young to really know what was going on on screen. But it was the first time I'd ever really seen my mum and her friend cry to a movie. And I can remember being like, Mum, what's wrong? What's wrong? And it was because of this film. And that is Soldier Blue. And this really is a tearjerker. This really does pull on your heartstrings a lot. It's, it doesn't leave anything to the imagination. It's a very graphic film for the time. This was released in 1970. Um, directed by Ralph Nielsen. It's a, it's a western, but it's like no other. It's really graphic. It shows you the brutality of of the West and what, and what they do to these Indians. It, 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 it really is a horrifying movie. And I used to have the pre-certification big box um, of this and it was uncut. It'd be interesting to know if this one's uncut. It's running at 110 minutes. I didn't check to see what the full running time is, but this was released in 2008. So I'm hoping that this is the full uncut version. It's on Studio Canal Optimum Classic release label. Jump cut, guys. That was the door. That was the postman. <laughs> um, but we'll worry about that later. What was we talking about? Yes, Soldier Blue. An absolute classic movie, guys. I highly recommend it. If you want an emotional roller coaster and, you know, it's got Donald Pleasance in it. I absolutely adore Donald Pleasance. An absolutely fantastic actor. And it was 29p. I don't know if you can see it on there. I'm going to pay 29p for that film all day long, guys. All day long. And then a film that I did have on DVD. It's not there now. You know what you do, don't you? You lend them out to an aunt, an uncle, a family member, a mate. And you just don't get them back. And this is one of those. And that's an American werewolf in London. And this is the 21st anniversary edition. Again, 50 pence. I'm not going to leave it sitting there for 50p. It's a film that I really want to get on Blu-ray. I absolutely love An American Werewolf in London. A fantastic movie. A great film. The 80s was brilliant for mixing horror and comedy. That dark horror comedy was just really, really good. It's sort of like a genre that kind of fell off in the 90s and 2000s it's not really done as well I suppose you could kind of put an odd few films in there like Shaun of the Dead and a few more sort of low budget films but in the 80s they've they, they done comedy and horror so well together you know this is dark brutal 
it's really gruesome and I think the effects hold up well you know I'm sure if you've never seen it before and you only watch modern films you watch this and you you laugh at it but for the time they were state of the art and has there been a werewolf film to beat an American werewolf in London Dog Soldiers that came close a great British film that um but no, I think American Werewolf London. That has got to be the best werewolf film, in it? Is there a film that beats that? Let me know in comments, guys. 50p. And then another Steven Seagal film. And I kind of... I might already have this one, but I picked it up because it, um, it's got DMX in it. And DMX recently um, died. Died very young. He was only 50, wasn't he? And... Um, I just sort of like bought it up um, because he's in it. And I remember, was this Steven Seagal's last great film? And that's Exit Wounds. I remember really enjoying this back in the day. But I'm sure I watched it not that long ago, a couple of years back maybe. So I might have this. But I'll always pick up an action film. And yeah, this one was 50 pence as well. When was this one? Crikey's 2001. I didn't realise it was quite that old. 20 years ago. That's crazy. But yeah, Exit Wounds. Let me know. Steven Seagal churned out so many films after this that were just god-awful. I'm sure this was his last good film. In my opinion, anyone. Anyway, guys, for what it's worth, another sip of this. My throat's going again. Oh. <clears throat> and then this one I've got absolutely no interest in. Maybe one of you guys might have interest in this one. It's, um, I've never been into the games. I certainly am into the cartoon. And that is Pokemon. And this is Pokemon Hooper and the Clash of Ages. It's on the manga label. It's all in there. It's in really clean condition. And it was 30 pence. So guys, anyone into Pokemon, I picked it up for someone else. You know, if anyone wants it, let me know. I'll send it off to you. But there's Pokemon. So there you go, guys. There's the charity shops done. And wow, what a mixture of genres. You've got westerns, horror, action, kung fu, drama, science fiction, martial arts. There's everything there. And, you know, it's fantastic. Just so cheap to pick these films up. And that moves us on nicely to the high streets and I did check out my local CEX full of stuff but actually nothing I'm looking for at the moment in there I tend to really I'll look at the blu-rays and things like that and um, but they didn't really have anything that I was after and um, I had a browse of the retro but the retro isn't that big in my local town so I had a look at that and um, but then I moved on to HMV and I was itching to get in there I love to flick through vinyl and have a little look at the the uh, Blu-rays, because I love how HMV, in my town anyway, they have it all split, split up. You have the world cinema section, you have a horror section, you have anime section, you know, and I like that. Um, it's not just A to Z. And um, I like to have a good old browse of the horror. And now they've also introduced a, like a limited edition and collector's edition sort of um, shelving section, which is really cool. And... I knew that Arrow Video, which is a label that I really adore, I've, I've bought their films for years. You know, they were the first, really. They were the pioneers in the UK that I remember, anyway, that were really grasping sort of B-movie horror, Italian horror in particular. And they were getting it remastered and putting them out onto DVD and then onto Blu-ray. And I had a massive Blu-ray section when Blu-rays were first about of all them sort of digi-pack, cardboard-cased um, Arrow Blu-rays. And I think I showed these before in a previous video. I'll see if I can grab that picture. I sold them on because obviously I was focusing heavy at the time on my games. And they were going for silly money. I think I paid 20, 25 quid each for them. And some of them, like Dawn of the Dead at the time, was hitting a £100, if not more. So I sold them on and I invested them a lot into my Japanese Mega Drive um, because someone had a bundle at the time and I wanted to invest in that. Um, so 
yeah, I really enjoy the Arrow um, video label. And because sort of like the last 18 months, couple of years of sort of like film has been on the back burner until, like I said, the VHS bootleggers and a lot of people discussing films on YouTube, it's kind of really reignited my collection. You know, I've got a fairly nice collection of Blu-rays. I've got hundreds of DVDs that unfortunately are still stored away in plastic tubs, but my Blu-rays are all out, and I want to add to that. I really do, and and, and there's quite a few films that I want to replace on Blu-ray, which I've got on DVD, and like I was saying, the original Arrow Blu-rays that I had, I sold all of those, and I still haven't managed to buy them back on the standard versions, and because I've been off the boil with films for a bit, I've missed some fantastic limited editions, but, you know, that's how it is. But I don't mind having the standard releases. And first up, we've got an absolute classic, and that is The House by the Cemetery. Um, like I've been saying, released on Arrow Video, and they've got a sale on through the whole of April, guys. So if you've got an HMV in your local town, get in there. These are all $7.99, which is a great price. This is a great print of House by the Cemetery. It's uncut. An absolute classic. Yeah, the dubbed version. The boys, the young lad's voice is a little annoying. But it adds to it. I kind of like watching, you know, I can watch it subtitled with the original language or I can watch it dubbed. It depends what mood I'm in. So I sometimes like the dub and it adds to the film because it's just so cheesy. And yeah, House by the Cemetery, a fantastic film with some gruesome scenes that still hold up fairly well today. And what we're going to have to do, guys, is I'm going to move these. Put that up there. And we'll move them up there because we're running out of room. It's a House by the Cemetery by Lucio Fulci. Another Lucio Fulci film, and that is City of the Living Dead. A great zombie film, this. It's not a classic. It's not as good as some of the other films by Fulci, but it's got some great set pieces. And I really loved how he mixed real worms and maggots and um, and the like in with the special effects. You know, you got maggots being thrown up and and bloody gungy worms all wriggling around in loads of gore. And I've really liked that concept. And I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. And you definitely wouldn't want to be eating your dinner while watching this film. Let's put it that way. But some great set pieces and a really good film. City of the Living Dead. And then we move on to a slasher, which doesn't really get as much hype as, say, like Friday the 13th and Halloween. But I think this is a really good film. And that is The Burning. It was um, heavily cut here in the UK for many many years and it's only been I can remember when this was released on DVD because I think it was originally a Warner Brothers film I believe and you know it's got some massive people this was a big budget film for the time and um, I know that I had to get the region one DVD because it was cut in this country um, but I think over time it finally got released uncut and it might have been for the first time on Arrow Video on Blu-ray um, that it was uncut here in the UK. And all I'll say on that is the raft scene. Wow, what a scene that is. It's a slow burn, a suspenseful... Sp sp spit your words out, Scott. It's a suspenseful film which really does build up the tension. And wow, when the gore hits, it definitely hits. A great movie, this. I really do enjoy it. Special effects done by Tom Savini who was an absolute master in that field. And the effects really do hold up well today. I say that with all of Tom Savini's special effects. A great, great film. The Burning. And then finally, it has to happen, guys. You know how much I love Robocop. I own... I showed off the big box VHS video in a previous pickups. I've also shown off the limited edition Arrow collector set. And yeah, I had to get the steel book, didn't I, guys? So I've now got it on every version there is. But yeah, $7.99, guys. I'll probably keep it in the cellophane for now, even though it's the wrap is a little bit tatty. But 
This was like originally 30 quid, guys. And, you know, you've got to give a big out, big shout out to the high street because you won't be able to get that online, I wouldn't have thought, for 7 99 unless maybe you go to Arrow Direct. But I know that on Amazon and um, eBay, you know, this was 25 quid. So 7 99 that's a bargain for a steel book. And an absolutely amazing film. One of my favourites, as you all know, guys. So... The final Blu-ray, and this was one that I missed out on. It, I think it released in sort of like February time. And it's one of my favourite films. And if you haven't watched it, guys, go back to the VHS bootleggers where we'd done a zombie stream, just talked for hours about zombie movies. And I said on that video that this was one of my favourite films. One of my favourite zombie films, you know. And it really is. I really enjoyed this film when I was a kid. I still really enjoy it today. It's been a few years since I've seen it. Again, I watched it um, a couple of days ago. And that is Lucio Fulci's The Beyond. An absolutely fantastic release, this, by Shameless. I used to have all the Shameless video DVDs, the yellow spines. And they were all numbered. I used to love that on the shelf. Um, but unfortunately, I sold it. A big regret that it, I really wished I kept hold of that. Um, but I sold that again when I was looking to sort of like bring down the film collection so I could expand the gaming collection. And at the time we was living in a small house so it was difficult to have both a film collection and the games running at the same time. Um, but this is a fantastic release. I love this box. It's like transparent. So the silver side of the disc shines through i don't know if that's going to capture well on camera guys but yeah it's it's all transparent a lovely case i really like that box art the spider through the eye on the back there and there's four different versions which i really like um this has been this is a new 2k scanned restored um release of the beyond and the prologue the introduction has four different versions. You've got the standard CPR monochrome, original colour, you've got black and white, and you've got the new yellow tone sepia on colour. And I tell you what, that is stunning, guys, seeing it with that yellow tone. It really draws the film out. The lights go really bright, and the effects, the gruesome effects of when they torture the guy at the start is, is brutal. It really is. An absolutely fantastic film, this. It's like a dream. It plays out real surreal, like a dream. In, I remember being a kid, it didn't really make any sense, this film. But I absolutely loved it. And I still do now. It is just like a nightmare, isn't it? And a brilliant take on the zombie genre. An absolute masterpiece of Italian horror, that. The Beyond... And that is a limited edition, actually, guys. It's numbered um, 1,603. It's going to be. It's a limited run, and it is still available direct through the Shameless website. And it's any 14.99. Um, and I've, I've, it might have even been free postage. I can't remember, guys. But yeah, 15 quid. And again on eBay, Amazon, it was 20, 20 plus. So go direct, guys, if you want it. A great film. And then we're going to end it on a VHS. Oh, yes. Another rabbit hole is appearing. And Sega Zombie is probably going to fall straight into it. <laughs> and I blame you, Pedro. I blame you, you VHS bootleggers. <laughs> but it's a VHS. And it is Return of the Living Dead Part 3. I got this for a great price because the box has seen better days. But the tape looks absolutely fine. There's no moulding to the tape. So I just need to see if I can get a replacement case for this. If I can. But yeah. I'm going to be very select on the VHS as I get. And predominantly I want the films that I used to watch over and over again back in the day. And this trilogy of films, I know they released some later on. Which were awful. But the first three the original trilogy are great movies that I watched over and over again. And I really enjoyed this one too. So Return of the Living Dead 3, full uncut version. 
which I can remember back then they started putting that on films, even though the films were never cut. As far as I know, they just used to put full uncut version to attract you when you rented it out. Taylor's Video Club, 86 Liverpool Road, open seven days a week till 9pm with the telephone number. Shall I ring it? <laughs> TV, video, satellite, sales and services, Taylor's Radio and TV. Wow. But yeah, we, I had to end it on a VHS, guys. And there we go. Let me know in comments, guys, really, what you're thinking of me doing pickups on videos and DVDs, films in general. I've really enjoyed doing this video. I can't wait to see what you guys have got to say in comments down below. There is a, a games retro games pickup coming really, really soon, guys. Literally, it will be out pretty shortly after this one. And as promised, there will be Sega. The last two pickups videos, there's been no Sega. There's going to be Sega this time, boys. Oh, yes, there is. And until then, I'm Sega Zombie. Goodbye. Sega, Sega, Zombie, Zombie.